let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. Coast to Coast, This Week in America. Charlie and the Elephant by Loretta Beecham is a story about a child who cares about other creatures. One who follows her feelings goes the distance to make a difference. A touching story that reminds readers of the importance of kindness. With lovely illustrations by Yvette Bessner, Charlie and the Elephant is truly a book to be read and remembered. A perfect addition to your home library. Loretta lives in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada with her partner Adam and their daughters Charlotte and Violet. Loretta Beecham, author of the motivational and inspiring children's picture book, Charlie and the Elephant, is our guest on This Week in America. Loretta, welcome to the program. Great to have you with us. It's a delight to be here. Thank you so much, Rick. What a charming story with a number of messages. I'm really interested in talking about how this whole book came about. And let's start with this. What was the inspiration? Where did Charlie and the Elephant begin? Well, Charlie and the Elephant began in my daughter's imagination. Charlotte, my oldest daughter, had, well, she disliked having naps, and she often told stories so that I would keep talking to her so that she didn't have to nap. So this was her way of avoiding things, and some of the stories were just wonderful, but this one uh, this one stuck out to me. It was um it, it showed her compassion for other creatures. Now, I did embellish a few things, but she essentially came up with the story, and I thought it was important to share that. The book is Charlie in the Elephant. Loretta Beecham, B-E-A-C-H-A-M, is the author. Book available at Amazon, the usual places, authorreputationpress.com as well. We'll have a link on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. I know you feel it's very important to retell stories that children share. That's sort of a unique approach on this. Sometimes we tell children stories and we don't listen to what they're saying. Why is that important to, to retell their stories? Because sometimes they have a, a better perspective on things than we do. I agree with that. Um, I think sometimes we forget, as we're trying to raise children who are compassionate and kind, that if they start to tell their own stories and their own versions of being kind and compassionate, I don't think it's fair to correct them. This is, this is coming from them, how they understand the world. And they're going to inherit this world. So I think it's important to give them a voice as much as we possibly can as they grow up and they face all these challenges. Do you think that makes you a better parent, being able to listen to the child? I mentioned sort of in passing, but I really believe that. Sometimes we need to listen and find out more, and then we can be better guides to them. Do you feel that makes you a better parent by listening? I hope it does. I really hope it does. Uh, Parenting is something that doesn't come with a guide. I, I know that there are guides out there, but in all honesty, when you're faced with this other person that you're responsible for, um, there's so much you don't know and so much you need to learn. And yes. quite often I find that the children teach me how to be a better parent. Well, it's interesting because this is a children's book. And as we'll discuss, there's so many messages, very simple messages, but messages that we as adults often forget. The book is Charlie and the Elephant by Loretta Beecham. What are some of the important themes that you would like readers to notice as they're reading Charlie and the Elephant? Well, some of the themes, I mean, obviously you mentioned the theme of kindness. So remembering that other creatures, whether they're, you know, trees, crows, elephants of of your imagination, deserve kindness and understanding. And that we live in this large world with so many creatures that if, if we don't learn to understand them and respect, you know, their being, we might not... You know, we might see mass extinction. We might see some very, very difficult times ahead. So I think kindness is important. But I also do think the idea of listening to my daughter's story is to remind people that they all have a voice. Charlie is, you know, quite young in the story. And she's told by, you know, she's told by some of the characters that we need you to to speak up. And so I think it's important for children to realize, and for adults as well, But if you see something that you don't like, or you see something that you feel is wrong or unjust, speak up. We all have a voice. One of so many 
wonderful messages, important messages in Loretta's book. The book is Charlie and the Elephant. The author, our guest, Loretta Beecham, B-E-A-C-H-A-M. Book at all the uh, the usual places, including, of course, Amazon, authorreputationpress.com, Barnes & Noble. The first part of this, I'm sure, was writing it and then finding an illustrator because the book is beautifully illustrated. Uh, and talk about Yvette and what inspires her artwork because she does a marvelous job of taking your story and putting it in picture form. Well, first of all, I agree with you. I think it is beautifully illustrated. Yvette is very talented. She uses as her um, inspiration the world around her. She's informed by folk art. She has a lot, a strong sense of folk art. Um, she's originally from, well, her family is originally from Chechia, so she's Czech, but she's here in Canada, and she loves to just completely get lost in a drawing. So she has this beautiful linear sense about her that as you look at one of her drawings, you can just trace it with your finger and go deeper and deeper. She does this with all of her illustrations, and she branches out in painting. But what I found about these illustrations in particular, is that you can actually get lost within them. Yes, you can look and sort of have your own story as you're looking at those pictures. You are absorbed in those. (laughs) That had to be a relief to find someone that would take your idea and then enhance it with the pictures. Uh, How important is it to have the right illustrator to express the themes in in your book? Well, um, we like to read to our kids. Now they're growing up quite fast, as they tend to do, but we found (laughs) that um, illustrations, the text is one thing, but certainly we have books where there's no text at all and the illustrations speak volumes. And quite often we found our kids, our children would make up their own stories as they went along and they would use their own imagination and try to place a twist on things. Um, Illustrations can't be undersold. They're so important for visualizing and to let the children see, see them, you know, create their own stories from yes. them. You know, besides Charlie, the main characters in the story are wildlife. What prompted you to, to choose these particular characters to help tell the story of Charlie? Well, Charlie is, she's not the only human in there. There are, there are references to others, but this was her world at the time in her imagination and in reality. Um, some of the creatures uh, include an ash tree. Now, we have had uh, in the city of Ottawa some difficulty with the emerald ash borer. So we've had a lot of ash trees cut down, and she found that that was very upsetting. And we also have um, a large group of crows that like to nest at the nearby hospital, so we can actually see crows every morning and every evening on mass flying back and forth. And this really left an impression on her and left an impression on me too. I wanted to incorporate that into the book. Well, you've done a wonderful job in doing that. Loretta Beecham, our guest on the program. The book is Charlie and the Elephant. We talked on this before, but it's so important. Charlie asks a lot of questions, much like any other child. Sometimes <laughs> questions can be tiresome, especially the the end of the day. You're trying to, to read a book or you're hoping they're taking a nap or they're going to go to bed for the evening. You feel it's important to, 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 to listen, not only to listen, but to try to answer. How important is that? To me, it's very important. And now I, I admit, like probably many other parents, I get frustrated. I get to the point <laughs> yes. of because I said so. Um, <laughs> but I try not to get there. Um, I try to say, I don't know, and then follow up with, let's find out. Um, say, for example, right at the beginning of the pandemic, my daughters are asking, well, why is it that washing your hands are so, is so important? So we, fit, we found a Mark Rober video on YouTube about how important it is to wash your hands. And he had a brief explanation of the chemical process behind it. And he used that wonderful word, saponification. <laughs> and so Charlotte looked at me and said, so what does saponification look like? I said, I don't know. And let's find out. <laughs> and so yes. we have done that since. And so we start to explore different things. So I think it's important not just for the children to validate their questions, but also for me as an adult who needs to find out new things all the time as well. And so their questions help me become a better person. 
Well, and oftentimes their questions are difficult to answer. Some you can Google, others you can't. They ask about uh, climate change, for example, uh, something that comes up uh, that they'll hear on the news or, or hear adults talking about it or wonder why the weather is different than it was maybe a, a short while ago. Maybe losing a loved one, and that's very difficult to, to look up something and find a correct answer. Distance to the stars, they have so many questions. How difficult is it to try to find the answers? And it sounds like you try to come up with an answer for just about everything that uh, that Charlie or a young child ask you. I do. I do. But I don't, um, as I said, I, I like to, I'm trying to not default to the idea of the parent just giving knowledge out, but to be vulnerable to them too and to admit, I don't know everything. I don't yes. know how to explain this. Um it is very difficult to answer questions like climate change, loss of a loved one, these sorts of things, or even just the distance to the stars. Now, those, those sorts of things, you know, Neil deGrasse Tyson can help me with, or Google can help me with. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I think it's important to at least attempt, because they are, they need to gain a lot, of, a lot of knowledge at the same time as I do. And so it's important to try but also important to admit when it's beyond me and I need some help. (laughs) You do an excellent job in writing this book and talking about these issues and bringing the issues up in a way that they're a talkable topic from a parent to a child. For a child, it's something they can understand and think about. Talk about writing a children's story. Some people think, boy, that would be easy to write a kid's story. But when you think about it, it's so important. You don't have a lot of words, so you have to choose the right words. You have to keep the the story moving, and you have to really speak at their level. What are the challenges in writing a children's story? Well, I think you summarized those quite well. Um, Pardon me. In a children's story, you have fewer words. And so you have to put big ideas into a limited number of words. That's a very hard thing to do. Um, So there's, there is that, but I think um, I, as I said, like, I haven't mentioned this, but this is my first attempt at a children's book or any book for that matter. And um, I think I took on a big challenge as a result because to keep a child engaged or interested or to explain a very big concept to them in just a few words is a lot harder than I than I ever anticipated. Yeah, I would think there'd be a lot of going back and reworking and like, okay, I can be a little more succinct than that and maybe get the message across with different <laughs> words. And and I have such admiration for you and, and people who are successfully able to write a children's book because it is a, a special type of book and message that you are trying to relay. The book that we're talking about is Charlie and the Elephant. If you're just joining us, the author is Loretta Beecham. If you're Googling, B-E-A-C-H-A-M, book available Usual places, Amazon, Barnes & Noble, authorreputationpress.com. And we've got all this on our website, thisweekinamerica.us. You mentioned children growing up rapidly. You have uh, two young children. Sometimes before you know it, they're reading to us and reading from adult books to us. Are you still <laughs> writing to the children? Is that still an experience you share with them? Um, occasionally. I would uh, I would say it's 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 part of growing up for me too, realizing that they've gone from, yes. you know, all those wonderful moments on the sofa, they're in their PJs and, you know, they've just bathed, it's time for bed and they cuddle up and they, you know, you go through something like Sandra Boynton and then next thing you know, it's Benicula and then Harry Potter. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and they're on their own. Um, but um, occasionally when uh, say they have a sick day or a snow day, um, I'll still be able to sit and read to them. For example, I read to my younger daughter the other day. um, We went through The Incredible Journey, which is also a wonderful book. Um, And so I can still have a few of those moments, but not not as often as I prefer to. However, that's part of my, I have to grow up sometimes. And you have such a great memory of that time and reflecting and what you were able to do and those special moments you're able to share share with a child at that particular point in their life. Uh, our, our guest is Loretta Beecham talking about Charlie and the Elephant. You mentioned this was the first book and you've really done an outstanding job with this. Are you working on more books? Not at this time. Um, I 
I work full time. I have two children. They are getting much more independent now. So it might be something that I look at. I know that when, um, well, first of all, when the book was published, my younger daughter, Violet, asked me where hers was. (laughs) (laughs) Um, (laughs) So I realized that perhaps, you know, these labors of love should extend to more than one child. I, um, so we'll see. I certainly took down a lot of notes when Violet was telling me all sorts of wonderfully nonsensical stories. So I might be able to look those up in the next few years and see if I can go have another go. Well, that's great. I love the approach of listening and then writing stories. You're able to address topics that uh, themes that young people, young kids have in, have in mind and and be able to address those overarching theme in this is what we ma- I mentioned in the beginning, kindness. What exactly is kindness? Let's sort of take a look at that. And you look at civilization, society now, and there seems to be a meanness level out there that I don't remember up until uh, a short while ago. Basically, if you disagree with me, there's, uh, there's a problem. There's a kindness deficit there. Uh, talk about what is kindness to you. You know, a kindness deficit is a very interesting way to put it. I think um, kindness, not to sound too trite, um, but to a lot of it is just empathy. It's understanding who you are and that other people are as full people as you are. They're going to have their opinions. They're going to have their likes and dislikes. Um, but just as you exist in the world, so do they. And that extends to our biodiversity, our flora and fauna too, they exist here with us. Um, And so kindness to me is understanding that, well, I have the right to exist and I have my voice, others do too. And I have a responsibility to respect that. You know, and it really begins with all of us. I I think if we all do something, the uh, cumulative effect will be maybe some changes in this. Do you do you look at it that way? This really begins with reading and listening with your children. That's where this whole concept, you become a better person because of it, and the child becomes a better person. I agree with that. I think um, just carefully listening to people and respecting their opinion, respecting their likes, dislikes, stories, um, and questions really does make a a bit of a difference. I know that um, some things that we've talked about, such as climate change, um, what I've heard repeated is we don't need one person to be perfect and to do everything perfectly. We need everybody to do a little Uh, bit. And And that's, to me, that kindness is where it starts. Just a little bit and it will grow. We've got a few minutes oh, yeah. left in the program. I want to talk about your your approach to this, and I and I love this. You you bring in your observation of what's going on in the the environment of the neighborhood. You see things. You remember things. How important is that to sort of take time and to look around and to appreciate what's there and and to make sure children are aware of that as well? In some cases, they're making that known to us what's going on in the neighborhood. But (laughs) awareness, how important is that to to you as a parent and to to the child as you try to 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 get them tuned into the environment as well? I think it's very important. As I said, they're going to inherit this. They're going to be with this earth a lot longer than I have been and my parents, etc. We see the passage of time. Um, part of it, I mean, is just trying to engage in general. I know when I would walk them to daycare in the morning, I would say, good morning, Mr. You know, good morning, Mr. Maple Tree. Good morning, Miss Cardinal. All of these things just to remind them to look around and to appreciate all the beings that were in this space. And um, I also think there's that old adage for an author to say, write what you know. And so if I never look up and never look around, I'm never going to have any experience or inspiration. And so to me, I have to look around. I have to be aware of the world around me in order to come up with a story. You know, it seems so simple when you're out walking, look up or look around. Just uh, two or four words can make a whole difference in your day and your attitude. And if you have a bad attitude when you're out uh, walking from one destination to another and suddenly you look around and you see things or you just enjoy the architecture of buildings if you're walking in a, in a downtown area, it can make a difference, can it, in, in how we feel and how we approach other people and the rest of the day? It, it sure can. Um, we... Uh... 
over the summer we were in the downtown core in Ottawa. It's had a few um a few exciting things happened in the last year, one could say. But um as we walked around some of the blocks we noticed that the lights changed and it was just a simple quest a simple thing where we looked up at a lamppost and said, Oh, there are dragons on that one. Oh, there are just flowers on that one. That one's plain. And it was just nice to remember that there's a lot of history and a lot of differences in the environment, including the built environment. Yes, and to to be aware, that's one of the many lessons and themes so beautifully brought out in the book, Charlie and the Elephant. I mentioned this is a perfect addition to your home library, and that it is, and the lessons, the themes that uh, are touched upon by Loretta in the book. The book is Charlie and the Elephant, our guest Loretta Beecham. Loretta, congratulations on the success of this book. Uh, do a second book and let us know. We'll be able to talk about that as well. <laughs> Excellent job with this book. I really appreciate you taking the time to be with us. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you. It was such a pleasure, Rick. It was fun. Loretta Beecham, our guest on the program, Googling, B-E-A-C-H-A-M. The book is simply Charlie and the Elephant. You look for that, you'll find the information. Amazon, Barnes & Noble, all the usual places, and authorreputationpress.com. And, of course, you can go to our website to get more information. That's thisweekinamerica.us. And we're back on This Week in America right after we pause for these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.